Philosophy with Mike and John. I'm Anastasia, and this week we're discussing the idea of separation of church and state, where it came from and what it means. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Cactus Cat Kolsch. From Nine Band Brewing Company in Allen, Texas. German ale with grassy, uh, grassy and biscuity uh, notes. What does that I'm even mean, you, biscuity? I'm, I don't know, but it sure is good. It sure is good. Somebody should tell them that biscuity is not a word. Well, it is now. They, they, according to John's way of usage, if somebody uses the word, it becomes real. Yeah. You did yeah. just call it a word. Yeah, and now that you're using true. it. That is true. Yeah. Now it's been used by multiple people. It's a word. Yeah. There you go. I want to kill myself. So anyway, um, I guess where do we want to start from with this? I guess we could start with the Constitution, couldn't we? Yeah, it's probably a good Always place. a good place to start. Wow, this is going to be a bang-up episode, isn't it? It is. But the beer's good. The beer is wonderful. I should have had this pulled up beforehand. and uh, I've got it right here. Oh, good. Uh, Thank you. We're talking about freedom of religion here, and, and the idea of is um, do we in fact have freedom of religion, or is there is there separation of church and state? Um, the, this, this all comes from two places. It comes from the Establishment Clause and the Free Exercise Clause right. uh, of the First Amendment. The Establishment Clause says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. That, that sounds pretty clear, that, that clear in there that, that, that Congress will not establish a national religion. Right. And you've got one group here that, that, that seriously leans on the Establishment Clause and says, this is, it is absolutely clear Congress can't create a religion. But the other part of that is the Free Exercise Clause, where it says, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And it almost seems to contradict itself sometimes to some people. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of looking at, at, at what y'all think that means. Um, what do you think the free exercise, uh, cl- I'm sorry, the, the, the First Amendment means by, by separation? Well, y- you know, y- you kind of hit the nail on the head there with me. It t- you talk about it contradicting itself. So, for instance, I could be a Mayan and have a religion that says I need to sacrifice people weekly or the sun doesn't come up, right? Now, it says in the Constitution you cannot uh, rest- uh, make any... The Congress can make no law restricting the, restricting the free exercise of my religion. Yeah. But, so, so you could make the, the leap then that, well, you have to let me kill somebody every Sunday, but then the other side of that says you cannot give any preference to a religion. Well, no other religion is allowed to kill people, so you've kind of given an exception to the rules for me. Right. So there we 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 find a contradiction in what the two things say, and and they're in the same amendment. That they're in the same pa- they were ratified by the same people. So what is important there? Well, if you look at the hist- at the history behind this, I find it fascinating. I, I kind of jumped in on you. I'm That's sorry, okay. there, uh, there, Anna. Uh, but I, but I get looking at, at 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 all this stuff, and and I see where it came from, and the idea behind this. And I don't think you can understand either one of these clauses without understanding the environment that it came out of. Right. You were in a situation where our our founding colonists, our founding fathers had grown up in a system with a state religion. Right. We had a system where people that came to this country uh, oftentimes were coming to escape the persecution of the Anglican Church, the Church of England. Uh, and that's what they were afraid of. They mm-hmm. were afraid of a state-sponsored religion. So to me, when I see this, it... it, it it pretty specifically says Congress shall pass no law. Correct. So to me, you've got a document here that was all about preventing a national religion, but I don't think the founders ever considered that states shouldn't be able to create a religion. Yeah. Well, and and if we're going to address it on, in that regard, um, yes, the First Amendment is very clear that um, you know this is the federal level. Uh, the the whole Constitution, like, this was meant to be um, restrictions on the federal government. Uh, but then, you know, not too long later, we have the 14th Amendment. Um, Quite a while later, but yeah. Well, I mean, I guess depends on... <laughs> 1868. A uh, little later. Yeah, it's a little bit later. But whatever. Um, halfway through the amendments later. <laughs> About 80 years later, yeah. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> um, so no, nobody who made the first <laughs> time was still alive. We'll just put it that way. So anyway, um, you then have the 14th Amendment that applies 
the Constitution to the states. Uh, I mean, we saw not too long ago the whole um, the whole Supreme Court decision. The, the incorporation doctrine. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, if you look at it that way, I think that at least now it's supposed to apply to the states. If, well, if you work on a that, if you work on a precedent system, right? Which I don't think we should. Well, well and and you know, you, you you kind of brought up that that should not be applied to the states, and and I agree with you that that was the original intent of the document. Um, of course, we we could then go back to our whole podcast on original intent versus the meaning of the words versus that was a good one. precedent. But um, so if you are looking at the original intent. I'm fine with that in, with, with that interpretation, and I think you're right. But my thing is, federal laws do prevent killing people, so you still create a paradox on the federal level, exactly where it's 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 supposed to be. Well, but again, it depends on how it's written. You have a federal law that says it's against the law to kill anybody, anyone in the United States. The freedom of religion law says specifically Congress shall make no law. It doesn't say the states can't. Well, I agree. I, so, I agree. So I, I think there's a different argument there. Uh, interesting, uh, interestingly enough, with the exception of, of that one spot, the word religion is only mentioned one time in the entire Constitution. Uh, in, in Article 6, it says that, that no religious tests shall ever be, be required as a qualification for public office. That's the only time it, it, it's mentioned other than that. Right. Well, and then to look at it again, um, it's actually been held up by precedent that um, states can have a religious test um, to hold office. Texas has one right now. Um, now, it's, from what I hear, not really enforced at all. Um, but, you know, you look at, at these two separate sides of this where people are arguing that um, the Constitution says that no, no um, government under the United States can... Um, establish a religion uh, or have a government sponsored religion but then that you know we can have a um what was it a religious test uh, religious in order test. to serve which, an office which, which to me is is ludicrous i think we got it wrong in both those cases i think if you look at the constitution as the founding document you have clear verbiage in one spot Congress shall not. It clearly says right. Congress cannot do this, and we've interpreted that to mean, but the state neither can the states. Right. And the other way, it says clearly that no test shall be required. Period. You like that? I did. No test shall be required. Period. And yet we've interpreted that too, but the states can't. Exactly. So uh, I, I I think they're you know bass backwards. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's interesting to me. So I, I want to ask a question, and it's kind of a loaded question because I think we all know the answer here. But um, we read through the Constitution, or we, we read through bits and pieces, and the only place that religion is mentioned, I never heard anything about a, w a wall of separation between church and state. Yeah, that's, that's interesting to me, too. And uh, I remember when I first learned about this, and unfortunately it wasn't in high school. I didn't learn, learn about the, the, the Danbury letter until I was in college. Right. Uh, and, and that's a shame. It that's is. That's something that we should be teaching kids, kids very, very young. Uh, the wall of separation... It, Interestingly enough, is is from a letter uh, that Thomas Jefferson wrote to the Danbury Baptists. Right. And what had happened was, uh, Jefferson was was no longer president at this point. He had he had already moved on. He 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 was retired by this point. And you had a situation where this group of of people, the Danbury Baptist group. Had, had, had expressed some concern mm -hmm. because if you know your history in Virginia, they had been persecuted very, very heavily uh, by, by the Church of England at one point during the colonial period. And they were afraid at some point that there would be some type of persecution brought on them. Because of this, Congress shall make no law. Right. And what they were afraid was going to happen was that the state of Virginia would create a law. And, and, and make their religion illegal. Right. So they sent this letter to, the, to this this late president. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now, well, he was still president when they sent it. He sent it in 1802. Jefferson responds at that after his presidency. Right. And in this letter, Jefferson is actually he's quoting he's quoting a, uh, another letter from Roger Williams that dates way back to 1644. But he says that he believes that the First Amendment creates a quote wall of separation between church and state. And he tells them, you've got nothing to fear, because the states can't do that. Jefferson made that quote. Right. And that kind of stays in the background for a long time. It's out there. People are aware of it. But but it's, it's not case law. It's a right. letter that a former president wrote. It's right. nothing important. Um, and that, that holds true until 1879. And in a case called Reynolds versus United States in 1879... 
uh, that they're they're dealing with the situation of of, of state religion and state sponsored uh, religion in schools. Right. And it comes up that uh, the, the chief justice writes in here that Jefferson may be accepted almost as an authoritative declaration of the scope and effect of the First Amendment when he talks about the wall of separation. Mm-hmm. And he quotes that wall of separation back. Now, all of a sudden, this letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote way back in the early 1800s in 1879 becomes part of case law. Right. Where it's got a lot more sway. It, it, well, it does. But but what I find interesting about it is, uh, and, and you know, our one of our presidential candidates, Mr. Carson, may have been, uh, been, been reading about this, this when he came up with his idea, <laughs> because he talks about how Jefferson should be seen as an author, authorita- authoritative site on the Constitution. Jefferson wasn't there he when the Constitution yeah. was written. Why is he considered authoritative while nobody's, what nobody else is? Exactly. You know, if you want to call him authoritative on the Declaration of Independence, I'm with you. Yeah. But he's, he, he's no more an, an, uh, an authority on the Constitution than I am. Right, right. Well, and it, it, it's I mean, inter- he was around at the time. I was close. Sorry, go- I was close. <laughs> <Go> <laughs> well, I find it interesting, you know, we talk all the time about various branches branches executive and judicial making laws through fiat um with executive orders and rulings but it's interesting that accidentally possibly jefferson kind of made one of the first laws from the executive spot yeah it it, it, you know and and it goes on and and uh continues to to grow in case law uh In Everson versus Board of Education, this was a case involving prayer in school. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 1947, none other than Chief Justice Hugo Black, one of the most famed uh, Chief Justices we ever had, right. uh, m- made many brilliant decisions, some bad ones too, but many brilliant decisions. Uh, and, and he quotes, quotes Jefferson here too. He says, in the words of Thomas Jefferson, the clause against establishment establishment of religion by law was intended to erase the wall of sep- I'm sorry to erect the wall of separation between church and state mm-hmm. so you've got time and again where these guys are uh, you know are, are quoting this this letter from the early 1800s right and today we have just come to accept basically that there is a wall of separation uh, you know I, I can remember being taught as a child, that there was a wall of separation, and believing that was a constitutional principle. Right. And and I, I'm sorry, clearly it's not a constitutional principle. It's something from a letter. Right, right. Well, you know, um, one of the things that I saw a lot when I was researching <coughs> um, were some people, or people on, well, actually really on both sides, they took both stances, which was kind of weird. Um, but a lot of people were claiming, well, this such and such was the intent of the founding fathers and then you know other people were saying well you have to go by what the founding fathers actually put in the document and I I really do think that the words that they actually chose are the ones that should be weighted although I don't think that intent should be thrown out entirely um well and weighted in the in the vocabulary of the time right you know a a, a lot of times the you know, things change meaning as as time goes on, and and, and that that's where I think you have to go to intent. Is you have to understand what a word means exactly in seventeen eighty. Yeah. So, um, I have here three um, proposals of what this particular part of the Bill of Rights should say. Uh, the first one was from a House Select Committee in July of seventeen eighty nine. No religion shall be established by law. Uh, the second was a proposal during House debate in August of 1879. Congress shall make no laws touching religion. And then a Senate version in September of 1789. Congress, and this was my favorite actually, Congress shall make no law establishing articles of faith or mode of worship or prohibiting the free exercise of religion. Yeah. Uh, I think I, it's more clear. I, I, I like that, but I, I think, I think Anna, that you're, you're falling into the same... Uh, the same trap, I guess, that a lot okay. of our judges fall into, is they look around and they go, well, this person said this, and he was on this, and this person mm-hmm. said this, and he was on the Constitution. Mm-hmm. So they start quoting these sidebar things as if they were law, just like the wall of separation right. was done. When, in fact, I think you look at those and you go, that was out there, mm-hmm. that was available, and the men heard it, and the men said, no, that's not what we want to say. Right. We want to say Congress shall pass no law. Right. That gives it more strength to me. Right. Well, and 
they actually use the exact same verbiage in that in the one that I said was my favorite. Congress shall make no law. Um, it, it gets a little different. Establishing articles of faith or mode of worship instead of respecting an establishment of religion. Um, and I'm not saying that I think that's what it means. I think that they, I do acknowledge that they deliberately said, we don't want this one from September of 1789. We're going to reword it to what we have now. Yeah, yeah, and I think that I think that's important to look at. It is. Uh, I, I just wanted to throw that out there to our listeners because mm-hmm. I'm telling you, our judges do that all the time. They do. They look at it and they go, well, this person said this and mm-hmm. he was one of the signers, so that must be what they meant. Well, if that's what they meant, that's what they should have voted on. Right. Well, and, and they, I also like, this is a little bit off topic, but they go through and say, well, previously our court ruled this, so I, I'm going to stick with that ruling, yeah, the, as if because it happened before, it must be right. You yeah, know? And, well, and, and But even then, that they, they overturn that sometimes, too, as, right. as, as the basis of, of morality uh, changes as we go on. I want to talk about two tests that have gone out there, two basic doctrines, uh, when we talk about this. You basically have two camps when you, when you talk about this. Mm-hmm. You have the no-preference doctrine and the no-establishment doctrine. Right. And uh, I, I've always found this fascinating for me because you can find constitutional backing for both of these. Mm-hmm. And and I, I can respect your belief either way if you can tell me how you got there. Right. Uh, and it, it goes back to the, the, those two clauses we talked about. The no preference doctrine has been the, um, the rule for most of our history. Okay. Uh, right up until the 1940s and 50s when it's going to kind of fall out. Right. Uh, the, the no preference doctrine says that the government is allowed to encourage religious deeds so long as they show no preference to a specific creed. Right. So it, it, in this situation, it would be okay for, a, for the government to sponsor prayer in schools mm-hmm. so long as you're not praying to... Uh, a Baptist God. Right. It would be okay to do to, to to encourage people to study religion in general, but maybe not necessarily to study the Torah. You know, right. this idea of no preference, uh, and, and I find that interesting to me. The other side, and this is the one that has come into into vogue, is the no establishment doctrine or the wall of separation doctrine. Right. That's the belief that 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 government can have have have. have no, uh, touch, can't touch religion in any way. It's entirely separate from government in all all manners, and that if um, you know, if prayer happens happens in school, you are violating this mm-hmm. uh, because because that idea that you can't establish any kind of religion. Um, so I'm curious, what do y'all think? Do you would you be more in a no preference idea or a no establishment idea? So. <clears throat> I, I guess I would find myself an establishment idea, but I think what we have done more recently has taken this establishment idea to an extreme level. And, and you can have extremes of, of anything. But my issue with a no preference doctrine is I look at it a lot like we look at the segregation with separate but equal. Mm-hmm. That's to be separate but equal facilities, but we know it's not possible to have everything be equal and separated. I think inherently certain preferences are going to arise, whether it be because of who's in office right now, who we're, who's not popular right now, who we're at war with, whether McCarthy is on a witch hunt at the moment. Yeah. There, there's going to be preferences arise. So I, I tend to think that that though the no preference idea is, is a not a bad one, I don't think it's an executable one, which then defaults me to the to the, the separation doctrine. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, for myself, I guess I I like them both. Um, I I would spoken like a politician. Oh fucking hush. Um, so I do not think that it would behoove the United States to establish a state religion. Um, you can look at history and see that <laughs> um, revolutions have been started because people wanted to practice freely. You have a funny look on your face, John. Well, you, you know, you're, you're <coughs> saying that it wouldn't behoove the United States, um, but uh, we've seen through history that many groups, governments included, will carry out actions that aren't beneficial to them necessarily. That we look back on history and say, well, that probably wasn't the best idea yeah, for them to do. Yeah. So okay. I, I, I just, um, I, I guess I, I'm, I'm waiting and wondering where you're going with, with talking about them acting in their interests. Um, well, I guess if you look at uh, the way that the country was established, um, 
or the ideas that the country was was established on, I suppose. Um, you know, one of the big things that prompted people to come over here was to escape religious prosecution. Persecution. <laughs> uh, and prosecution. Well, yeah, yeah. actually that too. Um, Both words are correct. Yeah. Um, but anyway, and so, you know, to stay true to our founding principles, then I think um, we have to maintain this uh, prohibition on establishing a state government. Um, as for not showing preference, I found some really interesting research um, that was kind of trying to shoot down um, the preference doctrine, saying that um, the courts had actually found on multiple occasions where in order to enforce the preference doctrine, it would have required too much um, surveillance. So, for example, in schools, um, to say that it is okay to teach religion in school um, you and then to say that you couldn't show any preference to a particular religion, the amount of surveillance to um, ensure that that happens was too much. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it would be tremendous. It would. And, and the, the argument for why that, that surveillance would be tremendous is that it would then inherently entangle religion and state. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because they would have to say, what are these religious people teaching? Yeah. Can they teach this or that? I tell you, I, uh, I look at these, and, I, and I, I'm kind of a no-preference guy um, for a lot of reasons. But I look at things, and I, and, and I look at it. If we have a wall of separation situation, then in a pure understanding... If that football player, at the players at the end of the football game, decide to get in a prayer circle and pray because somebody got hurt, that would be that would be a violation of a wall of separation. It wouldn't be of a no preference. Uh, I, I I just I don't have an I don't have an issue with that. I, I I think there's there's some questions about it, but the no preference doctrine to me is the more uh, liberty loving idea. Well. It's, you, you sit there and talk about the, if the student prays, you know, you, you have a violation. I only see that, in my view, to be philosophically true if you either look at the child as an agent of the state or as property of the state. Well, if they're wearing a, they're wearing a state uniform. They're wearing a school uniform. They're, 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 at that point, they are agents of that school to me. And I, I think that's I think that's an issue. Uh, well, and even if you argue that that well, okay, as long as it's student led, it's okay. But the coaches can't be involved. Well, you know, if I'm a coach and my kid kid gets hurt, I'm going to be in that prayer circle because that's I believe in prayer. I believe it's something that's useful to me. Uh, so, so I think prefer, the no preference doctrine is is something that protects that person's individual right. And we've seen that in the news recently. We had a coach here in Texas that's been removed because he led his, his, his kids in, in prayer before and after games. Yeah, but uh, my understanding, and, and again, I, I haven't followed that story too closely, um, was that it was a much more public... It, it, wasn't, it was very public, and it was, it, was, it was about propaganda, and I think, I think he handled it badly. But again, I think, I think he has a right to, 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 to lead his people in prayer. I think he doesn't have a right to require students to be there exactly but he and has a right to, to he has a right to get out there and, and pray and if somebody wants to pray with him that they have that right too well and i think the violation of the wall of separation would be in requiring it um i i see, think i see I, I i just i have a problem with your whole verbiage there the violation of the wall of separation because to me that's assuming the wall of separation is something you can violate and that it's real i don't think it's real well you were just saying that you so, um no, I had I had backwards your argument. No preference, yeah. Right. Um, but I think that if you come through and you say that um, they can't pray as individuals at a football game, um, you know, I think you're not showing preference for any specific religion, but I do think you're, what's the opposite of preference? You're showing prejudice? Against prejudice towards, yeah, yeah, and, you're showing sure prejudice I, I think, against I it. I think you probably are. I think you probably are, and and I think the other side of it that we have to accept is, if, you know, if there's a, a a Muslim coach and he goes out there out there to 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 do prayers and those kids join him, you have to allow that too. Yeah, you yeah. do. Well, we, we've talked some about praying here, which is a pretty benign activity mm -hmm. for most religions. Um, you go out, you you say some kind of incantation or think some some happy thoughts or reach out to, to your deity. It, 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 it's it's mostly a mental thing with some with some levels of a 
of a, of a tradition and, and, and stuff. But, you know, there are a lot of religious activities that, that require more action than, let's say, a, uh, a prayer. So um, where does this, this, where does the thing, where does it stop, well, the, the idea of preference versus separation, when somebody needs to, to smoke tobacco in their pipe and, and have their, their religious smoke ring or whatever? I, 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 yeah. I, I can actually uh, tell you what the court said with that. Okay. Uh, there was a case called Lemon versus Kurtzman, a uh, pretty famous case, and they came out with three tests, okay? Uh, they came down and they said that, now, now this is under the idea of no preference, they right. came down and they said that, that uh, and, and now they're dealing with governments and schools, but they said that there's three tests. Uh, whatever that, that, that is passed has to have a secular legislative purpose, so it right. can't be, it can't be, uh, you can't pass a law that has a religious purpose, okay? Right. Uh, second, its primary effect must neither advance nor inhibit religion. Mm-hmm. Right. And third, it has to avoid excessive government entanglements. Right. And these are the three tests that they put on these things. Uh, and, and you know, if you pass all three of these, then, then you're, you're safe. If you don't, you're, you're not able to. Now, you asked about that, that, that one particular case. Uh, in 1990, there, a group of Indians in Oregon sued. And what they sued was for the right to smoke peyote. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was part of their religious c- c- ceremony. And they put this all the way through the tests. Uh, and th- they said it, had, it met the first one, secular legislative purpose, no problem. Uh, the second one, primary effect must neither advance nor inhibit religion. They're okay with that. But they said it didn't meet the third, avoiding excessive government entanglement. Right. They came down and said that, 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 that because it's in because of, of the federal laws and the state laws that were entangled there, it caused a, an excessive amount of entanglement with the government involved with it. So they were allowed to prosecute them. And in Oregon, they were ruled that they couldn't. Um, interestingly enough, in, in Arizona, almost the exact same case with another group of Indians, and the court came down and said, no, it doesn't, and allowed them to do it. So right. you've got these different situations. But those are the three tests that the court generally uses. Right. Well, and more specifically, what I was talking about, and, and I tried to avoid piety because I think there's some, some issues that arise with that that could enter into another debate. But in your moment of silence at school, whenever whenever the football player is injured, can the uh, uh, Native American student grab some incense, go over and start burning them in, in, in a more, something that requires... Burning the incense or burning the person? Burning the incense? <laughs> Native Americans do not burn yes, people. Yes, in their, yes. They, they, they can burn the incense, they cannot burn the people. Yeah. There are some religious practices that involve burning people, but yeah, go ahead. But anyway, so go out and, and, and do something... And, and I'm going to say the coach here because I think they're very clearly at that point an agent of the state. Um, go out and, and do something that, that's much more uh, uh, active and, 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 and controversial to the rules of maybe having a fire on the football field um, for their religious beliefs yeah. other than just having a thought to themselves or maybe saying an incantation of some kind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think you'd put it to those tests. So uh, let, let's put that to the three tests and see. Uh what, did it have a secular legislative purpose? Well, there was no law passed. That, right. that doesn't right. violate right. that one. Uh, was its primary effect, uh, did its primary effect neither advance nor inhibit religion? I don't, I don't think, pra- it, if any other form of practice in your religion doesn't, I don't think this. No, I don't think it's. Right, uh, yeah. You're not forcing anybody. You're, you're, you're not, you're not right. stopping. And does it avoid excessive government entanglement? There's the issue. Right. Well, and, and so what does that mean? So, so we, we've talked about yelling fire in a crowded theater. versus Which has been ruled illegal. Yeah, well, versus lighting a fire on a crowded football field. You know, um, and, and I say fire. It's a very small one for, for some incense. <laughs> yeah. But we're not talking about a bonfire here. But so, you know, fire issues. Um, I, I don't know. I, 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 I see no issue with it. I don't either. If I'm in the court, I see no issue with it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I... I other, others would, but I, I don't see a problem. Um, and, and I think that, that that's fascinating to try and find those lines. It uh, is. And I think, you can, I think you can justify both no preference and, and, and no establishment. I think you really yeah. can. Uh, and, you know, that's part of what this show is about is, is exploring all the different, different ideas. Let's talk about the degrees of, of, freedom, of, of freedom of religion. Because, uh, well, are you really free to do anything does it mean that you are free to practice your religion if if your religion is something that is abhorrent to others um, and generally speaking you, you know we come down to three levels we have belief advocacy and practice 
And uh, what they teach in, in most of the college textbooks is your religion, your freedom of belief is absolute. Right. 100%. You are free to believe anything you want to. We can all agree with that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where you start getting into problems is in advocacy and uh, in practice. Right. Uh, there's usually, usually say we have a great deal of protection for advocacy. You have the right to advocate for your religion. Yeah. That's why uh, somebody can show up at your house at 8 a.m. on Saturday trying to hand you out pamphlets to save your soul. Okay? It's also why whenever the court comes in and rules that you can have Bible at school, then the Satanists can come in and bring Satanist code. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Advocacy, you have the right to advocate. Um I don't know where the line is on advocacy. But the last one is the one that really gets us, practice. Mm -hmm. Your freedom to practice your religion is greatly restricted. I think of, uh, you know, not even going to get into uh, into the wild, crazy uh, foreign religions. Let's talk about a native religion, a form of Christianity here, uh, big in the Appalachian Mountains. Okay. Snake handling. Oh, yeah, yeah, Snake yeah. Snake handling. Yeah. Uh, where they literally take the, the Bible to mean that, that if you are full of the Spirit of God, you can handle snakes and they won't bite you. And they pull these timber rattlers out mm-hmm. uh, and they hand them around the room. And every year some idiot gets bitten. Yeah. And, and, and gets, he didn't believe enough. He didn't believe enough. So what they, right. what they, they, they rule. The court has at some points ruled that it is okay. But most recently, for the last 10 to 15 years, they have overwhelmingly ruled that that practice is uh, is in violation of, 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 of government laws, and you cannot do that. Well, and what I've read more than that is that um, they've they've started a practice of ruling that um, adults can, no problem, but that they can't have minors doing it. Uh, well, they've actually, uh, in, in in several cases, ruled that 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 it just cannot happen. Hmm. It cannot happen. Uh, but yeah, I've seen those as well. Oh, okay. Uh, but well, what do you think about that? Should you have the right to practice your religion if your religion says that you can handle timber rattlers, and they won't bite you? Should you have that right? So uh, on this one, I, I tend to kind of side with the the court rulings that Anna was talking about, that you can do that, but you cannot. Um, force your kids into that well, it goes back to your idea that the parents but what about you, you know we did did the uh the idea of, of the theory of childhood you had come down on the side that uh, that parents own the children yeah and and, and i've i've kind of changed my beliefs slightly on that um my i still believe that the parents own the children but my thought is they own the children with the idea that one day those children at the age of 18 will break off and become independent people. So they can make decisions for that child up to the point where that decision then um, indebts them, enslaves them, obligates them past the age of 18. At that point, the child gets to decide. They, they can't <laughs> give that child away to marriage that in, in, a, in, a, in a way that they would have to go through it forever um, because they are then... Um, obligating that child past the point at which they have the option to do that. And I think handling <coughs> snakes is one of those things where if you make a child handle a snake, you could be harming that child past that point at which you're going to have control over it. Okay. Um, but l- let's, let's throw it out to another kind of uniquely American uh, idea here with, with religions. Uh, okay. The, the polygamy of the primitive Mormon church. Right. Um, you know... Uh, that, that that's something where where that practice has been greatly restricted. We yeah. have ruled that 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 is illegal. Is that a violation of the establishment clause? Um, uh, I, I personally don't have a problem with polygamy at all. Actually, yeah, um, kind of there too. <laughs> well, I I don't either. But I, we're, we're not talking about individual beliefs. We're talking right. about. In the text of the Constitution, yeah. Well, is, it, do, does the government have the right to restrict that? I don't. Well, I don't think I don't government think so. has any right to regulate marriage in any way. Uh, state governments, maybe, and we, and we could talk about how the Fourteenth Amendment has affected that and, and how that's all gone. But if we're talking about federal government, we're talking about the Constitution here. Uh, they didn't talk about their right to talk about marriage at all in the first place. How yeah. about child brides? Child brides. That's um, something that's become more and more common. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and, and and that gets, I guess for me, it gets back to that, that belief that, that you are obligating a child past the right at which you have a legal. Now, I have no problem with a child who agrees to it, and, and then you have to ask, at what age can they agree? Obviously, a, a one-year-old didn't even have the ability to agree. Right. Um, ah, damn, i got to let that one-year-old go. <laughs> right. So, um, uh, I think there's a whole 
longer conversation that could go into a whole separate podcast that we should redo at some point. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, so if if you're talking about a 15 year old or to 17 year old who who is in complete agreement and they're willing to 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 agree to this and the parents will agree, uh, I don't really have a problem with it. Although I get back to the, this idea of we're looking at marriage as this government institution, and I, I, I don't see their right in the first place to, to have that. Well, okay. I, I don't either. I, right. I, I'm with you. I think the government should be out of it. But if we're talking about religion today, we're talking right. about freedom, freedom of religion, and marriage is a religious uh, ceremony. It's, it's, it's a religious uh, activity to yeah. a lot of people. Right. So in that case, how does it fall under that that law. Okay, I see, and, and I have a, a really simple answer. Um, the government cannot use government force to obligate them or enforce some kind of contract, but if you want to go out and have a ceremony, a religious ceremony, purely religious, in which there is no legal ramifications behind it, have whatever you want. I mean, go, go have That'd a... That'd be my solution to most know, marriages. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, have your religious ceremony, do what you want to do, uh, and, uh, you know, if, if, if that's what you believe in, that's you know, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. That's what I believe in. So There you yeah, go. Uh, it's interesting. We've uh, we've talked about a lot of rulings. Do we want to rule in the beer? I think we sure. need to. I think we absolutely need to. Uh, who wants to start? Uh, not not the mistress. <laughs> I, I guess I'll go ahead. Okay. Um, so we actually had this beer on Friday. It was really good, and, and me and Mike had a conversation. It's not the darkest beer, but I think it's really good. It's balanced really well. Um, there is not as much complexity in it. As I like in a lot of beers, it's got kind of a grassy taste. Would you say that's a, a fair description? Uh, yeah, yes. I, I think that's pretty accurate. Um, but it, it's good, um, and this is this is a beer I could sit around and drink casually. Um, I'm going to give it a 2-8. Two 2-8. Eight. Two eight. Um, well, I'll tell you, I, I was pleasantly surprised Friday when John walked in with this beer because I just, <laughs> I just knew he was going to walk in with uh, with some more IPAs for us to drink. Uh and, um, man, I love this beer. I think it's got a great flavor. It's smooth. Uh, on my lawnmower scale, this is a 10. <laughs> I, I, I could drink this in the heat of the day on a lawnmower all day. It's, um, again, not very complex. It's a very light beer. It is. Yeah. But there's, no, there's not that carbonation that makes some, some of these beers right. very, very mm -hmm. hard to drink. Yeah. It goes down very, very easy. I am super excited about this beer. Uh, but, again, I don't think it's... I don't think it's fancy enough to get a super high rating right i think this is a good utility beer yeah uh, i'm gonna go with a, a three even a three even um you know you speak to the utility of it and that it is it's a very simplistic beer um it does have those grassy notes which i tend to like more in like the spring and summertime than i do when it's freaking cold outside um i'm gonna give it a two six it's a good Medium grade beer. Okay. Two six. I, I, I Two thought six. I really thought you would be higher than John. I uh, <laughs> honestly, whenever we first drank this, I thought John, John, you like this? I, 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 yeah. I, I'm completely shocked I, that, that that this is <laughs> even on your you know on your scale. Well, I mean, I, I do like my bitter beers and 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 I like my complex beers. Um, uh, but I mean, you know, I, I can I can venture away from that, and and this is a good beer. It, it probably, if it would have had more complexity and been more bitter, would have moved higher up. But I mean, it's a good beer. Yeah, to me, to me, this is this is what Coors Light should taste like. Yeah, yeah, I, I can agree with that. Yeah. And, and I like Coors Light, but but this is this is better than that. This is what yeah. Coors Light yeah. should be. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's why it ranked lower for me is that this is what a standard beer should taste like. Um. I personally prefer them to be a little bit richer, not necessarily more bitter, but just have a little more oomph to it. A little more body. I wouldn't want this with dinner. No. no. It's, not, it's, not, it's not full enough. But, right. But to sit around a campfire and talk to my buddies or, yeah. or when you're building fence and you need something to cool off, this exactly. is perfect, perfect. Outstanding. Yeah. So we, we've talked a lot about, you know, kind of uh, the current doctrine. We, we, we ruled as our own little Supreme Court, and uh, we've talked about the history I want to talk for just a little bit about, let's say that we're going to throw out the Constitution, we're going to throw out what the Founding Fathers did, we're going to throw out precedents, we're going to throw all that out. We get to build our own wall of separation in church-state, or we don't build a wall of separation in church-state. How do we 
frame that philosophically. I, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to say the same thing. If you if you were drafting your own your own amendment, what would it say? Right. Uh, and I think I think Anna's kind of kind of hinted at the direction she would go when she looked at what some other people mm-hmm. said. Um, what are we looking for in it first? Before we look for verbiage, what exactly are you looking for in a uh, in an amendment, uh, or or are you looking for anything when it comes to freedom of religion? For myself, I would keep, um, I would maintain the prohibition on the establishment of a state-sponsored religion, and I would bring it down to state and local governments as well. Um, I would do whatever I could um, to ensure that um, that people can practice their religion as they need to, so long as it doesn't violate the non-aggression principle. So you couldn't burn people who were not um, accepting to the practice. So if that football player, um, uh, if that football player got hurt, and somebody, I, I don't even remember what religion it was. I was even looking at the other day, um, where they they do like a series of burns on your arm, and it's supposed to make you. Oh burn. yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, I feel like it probably had a girl dressed in all black with black eyeliner that was that, that was involved in that religion. I have no idea. But anyway, <laughs> I, know, I, just, I have this image of this gothic chick burning herself to heal, to, to heal her body. <clears throat> so anyway, um, if the football player who was hurt was accepting of that practice, then that's fine. Um, if they're not, <laughs> though, and the person still tries to. Um, practice that part of their faith on somebody else that's a violation of the non-aggression principle and i think that's where the line of um free exercise should start and stop um the only other thing that i see is um you look at it and and a lot of people make an interpretation where by mentioning freedom of religion at all or by mentioning um not establishing a state religion, that you are insinuating that this is an alienable right. And so that's the only place at which I say... Hold on. Should you... An alienable or an inalienable? Alienable. Okay. By mentioning it, you're saying that this is a right that's granted to you by government and And can can therefore be taken taken away. away. Yeah, yeah. The way it stands right now in our Constitution, there can be an amendment put up. You know, that's... That that that's what Madison was afraid of. Yeah. Whenever we were uh, whenever we were first drafting the Constitution, I'm going on a sidebar here because uh, mm-hmm. uh, we've talked about it before, but I think it's important to bring it up again. When we first w- were trying to, to to approve this Constitution, and the anti-federalists said we have to have these Bill of Rights. Right. Madison said, "Do not vote for those Bill of Rights because some fool is going to come along and say that if if it's not written down, you don't have those rights." Exactly. And, and he was right. He yeah. was right. Yeah. So as it stands right now, there could be an amendment made to the Constitution that removes your ability to freely express your religion or removes the prohibition on the state of establishing a state-sponsored government. And so while if I put a, um, a clause in my personal Constitution um, about freedom of religion, I, I'm looking at it and saying, this is what I would put in there if I did, but I'm not sure that I would at all. Yeah, if you think about it, you know... Uh if if three fourths of states, what's that? Thirty six, is that right? Thirty six mm. states wanted to vote for it. They could repeal the First Amendment. Exactly. That's they could terrifying. repeal all of them. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty terrifying. Or it could pass an amendment saying that you can't repeal any other yeah. amendments. They, they, they <laughs> tried that. That's a whole mess. They, 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 uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I've got notes on Anna's red. You want to talk about yours? So, yeah, I think mine would be really simple. I, I, I like what she, she said about the NAP, but I, I think we're getting too specific here. Um, mine would simply say that no public official um, can give any consideration to religious beliefs or practices when carrying out the duties outlined here within this Constitution. Hmm. Say, say that again. No public official can do what? Uh, can give any consideration to religious beliefs Yep. when when carrying out the duties outlined within this Constitution. Cool. Um, what What does that mean exactly? So the idea is... When you're making a law, you don't you don't give any you don't make it based on your religion. You don't make it based on someone else's religion. You can't inhibit somebody's religion. You can't uh, uh, promote somebody's religion. 
you have to have, and, and this goes kind of back to, to the, the first prong of, uh, of the Supreme Court test, um, you have to have a, a, a secular purpose, a purpose of government outlined within the Constitution, which is in its very nature secular because religion is not mentioned anywhere in the Constitution. Uh, you have to have... Well, it's uh, mentioned in one place, in Article 5. Yeah, in, in, in Article 5 when it says you cannot give a religious test to somebody. It, it kind of reinforces... I'm sorry, Article 6. Thank Article you, that's six. what I I'm thought. Sorry. It, it kind of reinforces this amendment, but th this amendment takes it one step further and says religion is not the basis for any of, of your actions within this government. The basis for your actions is this Constitution and the laws passed by Congress. Yeah, yeah, interesting, interesting. Uh, I, I, I got to tell you... Go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask John, um, so... You talk about um, a, a government official not being able to um, take religious beliefs into consideration when executing their duties. Um, does this mean that a congressperson could not put forth a law that um, they believe is right based on their religious convictions? So, uh, depends. Okay. Okay. Is it outlined within the Constitution? Is it a legitimate role of government? Now, under a legitimate role of government, they could say, I believe abortion is wrong, and part of my beliefs comes from my religious conviction. Mm -hmm. But they cannot consider religion whenever choosing to make that law. They can't come in and say, well, you know, the Constitution really doesn't say anything about marriage, but my belief is that it should be government-run. So okay. I'm going to now add, you know... So where I'm relying on... Um the non-aggression principle, you're relying on enumerated powers? Yes. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Fascinating. Um, I got to tell you, I, I was making notes the whole time y'all were doing <laughs> this, and Anna may have I seen this. I wrote on I here. Uh, I wrote on here, no change. Uh, no change. Uh, no change. I, I okay. love, I love the way the, the, the way the First Amendment is written. I think it's perfectly clear. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I read this. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, comma, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. I think that is perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. Now, we know throughout history that, that, that the courts are going to interpret anything that you write in their own way. Right. I just don't think there is any way to make that clearer than, than, than the words that are there. I think that that is the, the heart of the matter. And I think we should have 50 states of, uh, you know, 50 laboratories out there. And, you know, if the state of Virginia wants to join the Church of England, they can do that. Or, or, or if the state of Texas wants to become a Baptist, that state, that, that's fine. And you vote with your feet. You get up and you move. Well, and I think the 50 laboratories of experimentation should be hinged on the ability of any one of those states, uh, those what I'm going to call territories, to leave the United well, States. Well, that, that's a different argument, and I it agree is. with you there, it too. Is. I agree with you there, too. But, but, but you wouldn't have to. You wouldn't have to leave the United States if those, right. words, if those words meant what they said. Right. And I think they do mean what they said. Now, I, made, I put a little note on here that uh, I put no change, but I also put, put no precedent. Uh, my problem is... I don't believe our court system should work under precedent. Right. And I think the fact that our court system works under precedent instead of under law is the problem with this. Okay. It's not the way it's written. It's not the law. The law is clear. The problem is precedent is allowed. You know, Hugo Black's interpretation of, of Thomas Jefferson's right. letter to become law. Right. Right. Now, well, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead. Um, you, you mentioned no change, and, and I had mentioned before, and I don't think we... I don't think it was addressed well. Um, the paradox that I feel like is created sometimes when you can't uh, hinder someone's practice, the the free pa practice of someone's religion, and uh, but you 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 also can't. And we talk about you can you you can't promote the establishment, but it really talks about giving preference. You yeah, can't give yeah. preference to a religion, um, and the paradox of that can create when whenever someone's beliefs require them to have preference to to execute them because no one else is allowed to execute those beliefs. Yeah, yeah. Right. Do you not see that paradox? And if you do, how do you see that? Rec I, I, how do you I, reconcile I, that? My problem that I run into with it is yes, there's a paradox there, and I see the issue with it. My problem is I don't see any verbiage out there that is better than the verbiage that is already there. I see any other verbiage that you put in there creating problems that are bigger than we have now okay so i'm willing to I, i'm willing to stay with these words but i'm willing to stay with these words on the you know on the uh uh requirement that our courts don't work on precedent our courts work on 
the word of the law. Our, our court should be based in law, not in precedent. Right. Well, and, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. Though I, I don't completely agree with you, I really appreciate, you know, your stance here because so often we see a problem. And I think we mm-hmm. all see a little bit of a problem here at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the question is, well, what should government do about this? Right. How should we change it? Right. What should we fix? And quite often we overlook the, the very obvious answer of nothing. Yeah. And I appreciate that, that you have considered that. I don't agree with, with your answer there. But, you know, hey, nothing is always an answer. Yeah. But I'm curious because, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a government teacher. So right. I like to do little, uh, little government style experimentations and see what we got. We have three people here that came up with three different ideas. And I'm just curious, is it possible for the three of us to come up with verbiage that we would be happy with? Or is there anything that we are that we are willing to give? Or would we be a deadlock Congress if we were doing it? Uh, go ahead. I move that we alter the phrasing, uh, or that we amend the phrasing of the First Amendment to read, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof so long as it does not violate the natural rights of others. So uh, we're going to have a, uh, a meeting here and try I, and work I, it out. I, I want to. I want okay. to see. I want to see if if it's possible. I, I got to be honest. I, <laughs> I, I have my doubts that I'm going to move. I'll, I'll tell you flat out right now. I have my doubts that I'll move. <laughs> but you know, we, we all know me. We all know me, and I, I keep an open mind, and I can be convinced. Okay. Is there, and I want to be convinced. I want to be convinced that we can come up with something that 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 would meet all of our needs. Is there going to be a chair to this meeting? I think we need. Uh, I think I think we're going to let Anna be the chair of the meeting. Oh yeah. I think it takes a, uh, what's it going to take take for something to pass? Let's, let's only, do there's a, only three of us. Do we do two-thirds or do we do unanimous? Well, majority <laughs> is two-thirds. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, let's let's go for unanimous, and if, if we can't, we'll see what two-thirds okay. can get us. Okay, let's, let's see what we can do. What were the wording, words I used? So long as it does not... Um, Violate the national... I think you need to be secretary. You got the paper and the pen. You left all the words the same and added it so long as it doesn't Does violate the, the natural, natural rights of others. Rights of, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. John, do you have any ideas? Uh, well, I, I'm waiting on the chair. I think this one's going to die to a lack of second. Oh, okay. Well. I I, mo- I moved. Nobody's going to second it. Okay, I, I guess, guess it dies. All, all right. right. So we we have no amendment before us. Um. Uh. I guess I'll I'll go ahead and and move to uh, adopt my wording. Um, uh, so your wording is that no public officials can give any constant or, or any consent to religious beliefs when carrying any consideration of religious beliefs when carrying out constitutional duties. Yes, that's your entire wording. That's my wording. That's all of it. So yeah. you're striking everything else. Nothing else. No, nothing was seconded. There's nothing I, on the floor. But no, I'm saying you're striking what was there originally and substituting it with. Okay, so are we doing this from the basis that we're changing what exists we are, or we're we making are, something we are from drafting, scratch? We are drafting a new amendment. So we're making a new, so there's nothing there and I'm there's nothing proposing there. this. Okay. okay. So I this just want to make sure. There's no second. There's All not. Right. <laughs> it sounds like it dies to lack a second. <laughs> and Mike wants to keep it as is. I present the words as as presented by the original Constitution. Congress shall make no laws respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. I'll second it. Fuck you. Just so we can get something <laughs> on the floor, guys. We can amend it. I moved to amend it to read. <laughs> Uh, after thereof, so long as it does not violate the natural rights of others. So Anna wants to wants to amend it with with her original words, which yes. is the exact same thing she had before. Point of information. Yes. Um. What does natural rights mean? I mean, we 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 drafted. I'm assuming the Constitution. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Are, are we talking about the, the life, liberty, and property? property. The, okay. Jinx. Uh, <laughs> Oh, pursuit of happiness. I think we we want pursuit of happiness. No, I actually, we didn't. <laughs> I'm going to be property. Yeah. Life, liberty, property, and happiness. Is that better? Uh, in a home. I don't care yeah. if you're and happy. Actually. Sure. Cell phone. Can we get a cell phone? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting a little silly here. I guess um, there was no second to that one either. No, it was. It was. Oh, you're talking about to the amendment. amendment. To the amendment. Um. So no, I had a point of information. Ooh. 
You did. What and, was that? Uh, no, I asked it. It was, what does natural rights oh, mean? And we covered that. Yeah, we did. So we're moving forward. And, and what was the wording? Uh, sec- she would draft this to say, Congress shall make no laws respecting an establishment of, of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, so long as it does not violate the natural rights of others. The natural rights. John's over here, like, rubbing his hands maniacally, like he's about to mess it up. You were just a moment ago. Uh, okay. I was rubbing my chest. <laughs> Um, oh, God, that's on video. Yes, it yeah. is. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think we have an issue here. Uh, Do we? Yeah, I, I'm not going to move forward on this at all. And it, it's not because I don't think your wording... I, I like your wording. Mm-hmm. Uh, my problem is I have a, a real issue with considering these things so quickly. And and to anyone who's been on a body with me, I, I take time and I generally anything presented on the floor, I'm not going to vote for. Right, right. So I, I would need more time to consider it. And I don't think we have time enough in this show. I would disagree with it because I think of, re- of principles of redundancy. We already have natural rights in the Constitution. It's assumed that it's already there. Mm, but I don't think it is clear which takes precedent. <laughs> I know you don't like precedent I, I, in the courts. I, I know. I, I, I have I have <laughs> issues with with redundancy of law and mm-hmm. I have issues with getting something so close and so tightly knit mm-hmm. that the Texas Constitution for example right. that you have something that you can't live under I think mm-hmm. the words that are there are perfect for a living constitution I'm sticking with them okay interesting I think your amendment died I got a, it an did. amendment it did okay I move to strike the words free exercise and replace them with belief Congress shall make no law Respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the belief thereof. Yes. What? So you don't believe in religion at all? No. So he's saying that you can believe as you choose to. He's. I think he's referring to the three levels of religion, yeah. belief, advocacy, and practice. And he's saying you can believe however you want to, but you can't practice however you want to. And I think I actually like that, and I'm going to second it, because I think that it establishes that... Uh, the natural rights of others do have a precedence over what you are allowed to actively do. I think y'all scare the hell out of me. I'm, I'm not voting for it. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's your issue with it? I just, I, I again, I think it, I think it comes back to redundancy. I think that is already there. I think you've got something that already exists in the Constitution. Well, and if you get rid of the idea of precedency, then it's a beautiful wording and it's a beautiful. Idea. Well, you acknowledge the paradox that exists with yeah, the yeah. exercise, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, and you you've said that you should be able to believe however you want, and and you've you've agreed to that. Can I have um, a beer? So thank you. We're, we're talking now, we're, we're trying to, because right now, the way it sits right now, I don't think anyone would disagree. The Constitution disagrees with itself. I don't think it does. I think it can be interpreted, too. Okay, so let's, let's go back to the, uh, the, the, well, the smoking peyote. Let's not talk about killing somebody. I think that, that's pretty clear cut. No matter what the Constitution says, we don't think we should be able to kill people for our religion. Let's go back to the peyote Wait, issue. Which people? Because I have a list of people that I think it would be okay to. Right. Well, you're there. Are other people that think you should be on that list, and there, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got a point. Got a point. You know. So um, let's go to the peyote issue, or let's go to people who who believe that they should. They don't believe in the. Let's say that socialism develops a religion, and they believe socialism is a religion. Fine. Oh my. They believe that they don't believe is capitalism or religion. Yes. Okay. They okay. don't well, believe in the individual ownership of things. They believe that everything is communally owned. Yep. And now they're exercising their religion whenever they go in and 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 just sit on land that they that disagrees with your right with somebody's right to property. And we have now a paradox in the Constitution. Okay, I, I've got to be honest. I like I like Anna's v- verbiage better than I do yours. Uh, I do too, but I was willing to but, compromise. But, but 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 I really don't like either one. Um, okay, how about this for a compromise? Wait, is it open for another? Well, my, I think my amendment's still on the floor. You can amend my amendment. I, I'm not amending your amendment. I'm not voting at all for your amendment. <laughs> I hate your amendment. Okay, well, I, I think it's time to take this to, to a vote. To a vote, unless, to a vote. <laughs> unless there's any more debate. Uh, no, debate is over. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Okay. okay. So that was for the amendment. The actual um, 
the actual motion is still on the floor and available to be amended if you so choose to try. All right, I'm going to try this here. Okay. Because I don't like I, 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 I don't like I like the principle of Anna's idea, but I'm not crazy about the verbiage. Okay. So let, let's try this. Uh, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of a religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Um, so long as it does not violate the enumerated rights of others. Enumerated rights? Because I think we look at the Constitution, well, I guess in the beginning, if we're assuming that we maintain the life, liberty, and property right. Um, I think they're already there. Yeah. They're already in there, and so, so the life, liberty, and property, if we, we throw that back in, we're being redundant. I so, think we're calling that, so we're calling life, liberty, and property the enumerated rights. No, those are natural rights. Your that, enumerated that, rights are the other laws, are the rest or of all them. the other rights that you have in there. So you have the rights as long as you're not violating any of those other rights that have been enumerated, so, such as private property and, you know. That's a natural right. So such yeah. as the right to carry a gun? Yeah. Okay. Prohibiting the free exercise thereof so long it as may it doesn't... have hit a, hit a wall here. I think we might have. Well, and you, you talk about the enumerated rights, and enumerated rights are, are a really interesting idea because, on the one hand, it, it comes back to this idea that they were scared to make a bill of rights yeah. because mm -hmm. of... But on the other hand, courts have found in the enumerated rights yeah. your right to health yeah. care, your, I, I, your right... I'm not sure I like this, this amendment that I put yeah. out <laughs> Do we have the enumerated right to a cell phone? Because uh, I was going okay. on the cell phone bandwagon earlier. Can, can, I, can I withdraw my amendment? Yeah, yeah, you can. It the didn't get a second. Withdrawn. I think I think this is dead, guys. I'm sorry. I think yeah, it is because I'm not changing. I'm not. I, there's, there's 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 been nothing here that I've been willing to accept. Well, let I, me ask this. I think the poetry of the original is so wonderful. I'm sticking with it. If the wording that we chose um, in the beginning regarding life, liberty, and property specifically established that those. Uh, those natural rights held precedence over any laws created um, under said government, then we wouldn't need these so long as it does not violate the natural rights of others. I would, if we could do that, then I would agree to keeping it as is. So give the enumerated rights of life, liberty, and property a, those preferred, are natural posi rights. A, a, natural, a preferred position over all others. Yes. I would support that. How about you? I, I still can't. I still can't go. You still want your cell phone? <laughs> yes, it is. I, I do. It no, you. no I, I still see the paradox in, in, in the, uh, the the practice thereof, um, and so I. Uh, okay. I, okay. <laughs> this isn't working, so I'm just going to introduce something right here. Okay. Let's just go with Congress shall make no law. Okay. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> the uh, six-pack philosophy Congress has failed. <laughs> um, we really need like twelve people to do this and get any kind yeah. of a feel for it. We do. We do. Well, um, two-thirds means something because there were a few yeah. of them that would have passed with two yeah, under two-thirds. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so something that I kind of wanted to talk about um, was actually in regards to um, people, uh, agents of the government, so legislators and things like that, um, bringing their religion into the, uh, into their position. Um, talking about judges you're talking about? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Judges, congressmen. Yeah. Well, sheriffs. you know, um, there are laws that are proposed all the time in the U.S. Congress and um, in the state legislature here and elsewhere um, that are at least argued very strongly on the grounds of religion. Um, do you think that the wall of separation should require or should allow for those arguments to be made or should they have to be made on different grounds? Like you were talking earlier about how um, their religion might influence it, but it should need to be. Um, what was the wording that you used exactly? I don't know. I, I disagree with your premise. Okay. I, I I don't think there is a wall of separation. So, well, so yeah, the yeah, premise yeah, of the that. argument would be would be very hard for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but but no, I think I think you are free to argue uh, 
anything you want. You can, mm-hmm. you know, if you elect a congressman, you elect them based on what they, you know, what their stated beliefs are, and they are free to introduce anything they want to. Mm-hmm. It's the job of, of of courts to determine whether or not that's constitutional or not. Okay. So there are a couple of places I have issue. I, I do have issue with the congressman who introduces something, but uh, to Mike's point, that's the job of the the well, it's the precedent of the. Uh, it, it, yeah, by yeah. precedent, which by is pre- bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, it's the precedent of the courts to uh, to police that. But then we have cases, uh, numerous cases, and and this has been accepted sometimes that accept religious doctrine as their 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 part of their ruling. Well, but that's what that's what we have appeals for. Right. That's what we have appeals for, and 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 you know what? Sometimes the court gets it wrong, but I don't think there's a better system. So then my question is, if if a congressman can introduce whatever he wants, a court can rule however he wants, they can do whatever they want, and if it's religious, that's fine, then what were we really protecting with with the republic? Can, couldn't people just then vote however they... Couldn't the mobocracy I just... Well, I don't... You know? I, I would disagree with the idea that courts can can rule whatever they want. And the reason why is because, again, I go back to this idea that the purpose of a court is to enforce the law as written. Yes. And when... when now... Sometimes there, there's rogue courts that don't do that. They don't enforce the law. They invor- enforce principles. That's the problem. It, the problem is not, uh, I, I don't know, the, the system. The problem is how it's been carried out, I guess. Right. Well, I don't and, know how to fix that. And, and the Republic was meant to fix that, though it, it seems to have in some ways failed. Um, well, in some ways, yes. But I think, you know, let, let's be honest. We have made great progress. Absolutely. Great progress. Uh, I, I think... In the grand scope of things, the Republic has succeeded beyond all possible imaginations. Mm-hmm. Right, and it's, it's, it's had a lot of successes. So, I, I, I like this idea that um, they can't bring their religion to the bench. They can't bring their religion to their, their legislation. If they do, the courts should throw it out because that's not... Uh, that's okay. okay, but that, that that's okay. They, they can... But then the court looks at the case, and the court says this is a violation. It gets thrown out. So I think, but you still have the right to bring it. I think we're I think we're getting getting caught up on uh, semantics semantics here because you're saying they can, but somebody can bring a gun to a crowded place and start shooting people. They can do that, and it's the police's job to stop them. When they do, no, I don't think I don't, I don't think that's the same thing. So, at what all. does the word "can" mean here? I don't think it's the same thing at all. I think I think in a republic, when you elect somebody, you are electing them for their because of their, or you're supposed to be electing them because of their core beliefs and their core philosophies. And you know what? If an area elects a congressman because he comes out and he says, "I believe in Judeo-Christian principles, and I'm going to vote Judeo-Christian principles all the way," and they vote for him, then that's what he's expected to bring. But now he can he goes out there he puts that out he does what he can and it's the court's job to come through and say look you're in violation of this and the courts are the police yes of, so he's in violation so the police come in and well I don't think he's in violation in presenting it I think they would come through and say look the law that it was not a crime for you to present this but the way it was drafted. The wording of it, the verbiage, is in violation of of, of, of this. Go back and read it. So is there anything yeah. that yeah. it's a crime to present? Or not a crime. I, I no. say the word crime. Is there anything that they can't present? They can no. present anything. They no. can just present... I don't care. Uh, you know, throw a certain religion in the oven. They or, do. You know, what the hell? I mean, uh, it, it, yeah, got, of course it you happened. Can. You can. It happened. You can. And it's the job of the court to say you can't do that. Okay. But it's that... But it's that congressman's job to represent the will of the people. And then to the next step, the courts can rule however they like. So they could, as long as it's as long as it's it, it, it's in the Constitution, as long okay. as it's something that is that is there that is based on law. Law. Well, okay. Okay. Um, I think that's the most free way to look at it. All right. I mean, I, I, I gotta I gotta disagree with you. Um, I mean, I I see what you're saying, but I, I think you know. The whole idea of, of the Bill of Rights, of the Constitution, of all of this, and the arguments that were subsequently made about it were about restricting the government. And if you say, well, the government can do whatever it wants, we just well, have these, no, these checks. No. You these are restricting the government. That's what the checks and balances are for. It's not about restricting the individual. It's about restricting the government. That congressman is an individual, and he's voting his conscience, and he's voting the way that he was voted, uh, voted in by the people to vote. 
But but so we're talking about an individual practicing his role as a public official. We can make that argument for anyone. That policeman was an individual whenever he did whatever he did that was he was supposed to be a government role. The president was an individual whenever I don't think it's the same thing because if you're a police officer you were hired by the people to enforce these laws and this is what you have to enforce. If you are voted in by the people, you are voted in for your fundamental beliefs. You can, can't change this. Can the president direct the military in any way he wants? He's an individual. And the courts could just then come through and... I think it's... Uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. <laughs> I think as long as it, as it's under constitutional principles, he can. Uh, but but again, I, I, see, I, see the, the, I see the difficulty here. Mm-hmm. I see the difficulty. I am trying to be as free and as... Uh, uh, you know, as true to the, the basic principles as I can be here, and I think I think you're, the role of a congressman is to, you know, is to get out there and say, this is what I fundamentally fundamentally believe. If he gets elected, his job is to try and do that. Okay. Whatever the people voted him for. Okay. So something else that I wanted to consider that actually kind of inspired this whole podcast was um, tax exempt status for churches. Oh, I was going to say beer. <laughs> <laughs> that inspired the podcast in general. It inspired the show. Yes. yes. <laughs> this particular episode was inspired by a tax exempt status for churches. We were sitting there thinking to ourselves, you know what we'd like to do? We'd like a job where you can just talk about politics and drink beer. Yeah. That's ideal. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, um, as it stands right now, most churches although not all, um, are 501c3 organizations, meaning that they are tax-exempt and that donations to those organizations are tax-deductible. The argument has been made several times that um, churches, in order to maintain the First Amendment that does not show preference for any religion um, and does not establish a state religion, um, that churches should not be allowed to be tax-exempt. So let me propose something here, and if y'all don't want to do it, strike it down and we'll continue. We're at about an hour and ten minutes. I think there's a lot to talk about on this particular topic. We actually have another beer in the fridge, and we actually only need this episode and another one to finish out the year. Mm -hmm. Do we have another episode in this, and do we want to do it? I think we at least have a hard shot. I don't know that we have a full episode. Okay, do we want to leave people on a cliffhanger here? (laughs) And we will come right back if you're on Periscope right now. And uh, we'll finish this, and you can see it now, or if you aren't on Periscope or don't want to come back, uh, you can catch it next week. Do we want to go ahead and do that? I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Let's, do, uh, let, let's cut it off here, and we'll come back with a hard shot on, uh, on, on Churches and Charity instead of a full episode. And you'll have to go on and subscribe to Hard Shots, too. Yeah, if you'll uh, search Hard Shots on your favorite podcast platform, you can find us. Hard Shots by Six Pack Philosophy. It's just called Hard Shots. but uh, It's got the same yeah. logo. Yeah, Pretty much. You, you'll you'll recognize it. And from there, I guess I'll let the mistress do the rest of our shameless promotion and advertising. <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, you can find us at sixpackphilosophy.com. We have some exclusive content there. You can find all of our beer ratings, figure out what you're going to drink at your next cookout. Um, you can also find us on social media by searching Six Pack Philosophy. And um, if you're listening on our website or you're listening on a friend's phone or something like that, um, you can find our podcast on any of your favorite podcast platforms by searching Six Pack Philosophy. Um, although, if we're not on your favorite podcast platform, let us know, um, and we'll try to get on there. You can let us know by sending us an email to contact us at sixpackphilosophy.com. Might I also mention, we now, and we're, at the moment we're not doing anything, but it'll be a couple weeks for this mm-hmm. comes out, so hopefully we're doing a little more with it. We now have a YouTube and we will be releasing videos of of our shows. And porn. And porn. <laughs> uh, but we now have a YouTube. And with that, because Google now owns YouTube and the rest of the internet, we have a Google Plus page that we haven't done a thing with. But maybe if, if yeah. you're on Google Plus. Just, just for you know, just so everybody knows, the porn will, will be starring just the cast of Six Pack Philosophy. Mainly just me and Mike. Mainly <laughs> me and Mike. This is 
getting weird. Okay, so anyway, um, check us out on YouTube. You can see all of our crazy antics, and you actually get a little bit of um, exclusive content there. You get us right before we start recording, and a little bit after we start. Rec- nope, never mind. John. I don't know. No, that you only get that on Periscope. Yeah, you're doing that live. You got to watch us live. We're gonna cut off the little bits in the front and the, in the end. So uh, yeah, we're gonna, gonna cut off the parts where we look like assholes. <laughs> That's the show, Mike. <laughs> if you want to see us uh, completely uninhibited, you can do that by finding us on Periscope at the number six pack philosophy. Follow us on there. It'll let you know every time that we're recording every Sunday and uh, it should be fun. So it, it should be. I'm not <laughs> promising it will be, but it should be fun. With all of that said, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. As always, we really appreciate our listeners and uh, cheers. Cheers. That's that a very terrible quiet. sound. Yeah, cans never sound right. Cans they never don't. sound right. I got blisters on my ears. Yeah. <laughs>